welcome to the Tavola Aperta. Uh, this is a special program that uh, Christine Marcel uh, conceived for this year's uh, 57th International Art Exhibition called Viva Arte Viva. And it's an occasion to have uh, a talk with the artists exhibiting, to hear their voices uh, uh, over in a very informal and convivial way, uh, so over a lunch. Uh, it is not supposed to be a talk between me and the artist, so uh, you are all invited to participate with questions uh, and comments. Uh, and of course, it's a lunch, so please eat. Uh, our guest today is Andy Hope, 1930, uh, who uh, is exhibiting not here in the Arsenale, but uh, at the Giardini in the Pavilion of Joys and Fears, right? And he has um, an installation of uh, a set of different works uh, uh, in his room, uh, of which maybe uh, the central uh, piece uh, is the 44 uh, minutes uh, uh, video uh, called Vertical Horizon, right? right. Uh, so, um, first of all, I want to welcome you uh, and thank you for coming and also welcome our guests. Thanks for inviting me. Um, we have a group of students also at the table, so uh, maybe I'll ask you to explain some parts of uh, related to your work uh, also for them uh, um, in a more detailed uh, way. And uh, one of the things that I'm not sure uh, they might know is that your uh, Andrea Andy Hope 1930 is actually an alias. Uh, your real name is uh, Andreas Hofer, right? It's actual uh, translation from in English. Yeah, <laughs> it fits there. Yeah. So I wanted to start by asking you about your name. Why did you? Because it's important uh, the the name you chose, uh, uh, the name with yeah. which you sign your work. Okay. So the name, uh, I'm often asked by the name, but uh, the name was a process. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went back to when I went to art school in London, JRC College. And actually the name was idea by student colleagues. And uh, I did my final show there and it was called uh, Dorian Hope. Mm -hmm. And was a follower of um, Arthur Craven a data artist and um, maybe a model for some artists like Marcel Duchamp and Francis Picabia, Man Ray. And um, I did uh, installation was showing his disappearance in uh, Mexico. He was uh, a, um, a deserter, a war deserter, and uh, he lived I think he was married with Mina Loy, mm -hmm. and she was on the way to him. And he, but he tried to get away to uh, to Mexico over the over the border to Mexico with a little sailboat, and probably he uh, got murdered and ro robbed and uh, tr he, tr he drowned. He drowned. Yeah, probably. Yeah, except uh, they never found him, and never. Some people later they said. They saw him in Paris or so, so, so saw him somewhere in the world, but they never, uh, it was never a real, a, a, a real fact to Ken Kleinless. And um, yeah, and from this name Dorian Hope, they said uh, to me, Andy Hope, you know, so, the, so I called to show it in, in, in the end, Andy Hope, you know, so, so that was the first time to introduce this idea. And, um, it was, in the, I said already, it was also a translation from Andreas Hoffer. Mm -hmm. It's Andy and Hope Hoffer. It's like the same, yeah. the same idea, you know. So, and it was a process. And I started out 1998 to signing my work with an Andy Hope, you know, just for fun. There was not really a kind of serious plan behind it or so. But later on, more and more it becomes sense because it becomes something between my work and the public. And and then after this, it becomes more and more like uh, this kind of artificial persona, what I think it has more truth than my own name because you're acting different and you're changing in this long time of process your persona as well. So I think it was quite good 
and 1930, uh, the number you can see more as a picture, as a, as a number of a uh, certain kind of period, but also it marks a kind of time door, or a time to can switch in the past to the future. And I found it quite interesting to have this before the big European um, disaster and end of the avant-garde and the rise of uh, the pop culture like superheroes and other media forces rises up at this time. So all your work from 1998 on is signed Andy Hope. Yes, uh, yes, 1930, yes, right. yes, yes. I mean, with little exceptions, <laughs> what I used, uh, what I used, um, some kind of um, how I can say this. It's like companions, mm -hmm. uh, authors, like Psychic Alchemy or I, Lord of Illusion some stuff like that. But it's always in combination with my name. Okay. I, and I, I signed an, an imaginary with. I did also ima works with imaginary, uh, imaginary with Francis Picabia or imaginary with Paul Klee or something like that, you know? Okay. So, um, let's talk a bit about what you're exhibiting here at the Biennale since uh, we're here. Yeah. Uh, mainly uh, about that. Uh, I don't know, uh, um, maybe we could start uh, with what is the central piece, even though it's only a part of a whole, uh, which is the video. Yes. Um, it's a very long video. Mm. Uh, it's a middle, middle, uh, a middle uh, running, middle t 45 okay. minutes. Uh. Um, it's not a, a short movie, but it's not a long movie. It's like uh, no, 90 minutes, minutes. But for, it's 45 a, for minutes, an art yeah. video, it's uh, yeah. as a movie. Yeah. If you look at it as a movie, yeah, it's a short mm. movie. If you look at it as a video, uh, it might be. When, when you call it art, it's okay. I mean, yeah. I, w I wouldn't. Is know. it? Is it I art? Mean when you do is a it a movie or is it an art artwork? <laughs> uh, I mean, it even even when you ask for the paintings, I wouldn't say it, it's automatically a, a work of art. It's a, a painting is not a work of art. It's just something what you can put in the context of art, and then mm -hmm. you can see how it works. You know what I mean? How it how it comes up. But mainly, I would say the the installation is addressed to the question: What comes up in the future? What what is our future? What can be our future? And it's more like this, um, it moves between this axis, between asking for um, um, financial world, business world, also um, philosophical questions. Um, economy concepts all this uh, all this i all these important questions comes together in a way and uh, and I try to get my journey uh, like a walk through and can pass by these different stations in the movie and also in the installation. Okay, so how did the movie come up? How did you, how was the creative process of the movie? The uh, I mean, the, the, the origin of the, of the character, origin of the character um, is a show with House on the Wirt in nine, uh, 2015. It called Unappropriated Activities. Mm -hmm. And, um, I introduced a, a sculpture with this character the first time. Um, it was called Fran Essence. And he was wearing uh, the character. Yeah. He's wearing this business suit. And so this was the first thing that I thought it has something to do with this uh, neo neoliberal society and, and, and things and, and uh, 
models like for this for the for, for the for the for the for the character was uh, for example uh, a film by Niklas Rück, Man Who Fell to Earth, mm -hmm. or Deranged from Peter Fonda, it's a psychedelic movie from the 70s about the time traveling in a desert. And I always thought I always saw the character came from the desert. Never saw something. I saw him always. He's coming from the desert, and he moves towards, or he's walking towards, to the urban space, where he comes through the suburbs and walks through this, the ends in the business world, in the sub, in, 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 the, in, the, in the urban space. Yeah. So, uh, how was the making? Did you do a script for this? Uh, I mean, I did a trailer yeah. in 2015. Um, shoot a, a little sequence like 15 minutes and we have it, it, uh, the trailer was like two minutes long or a one or a 90, nine, nine, one and a half minute long and but it was a complete different idea in the beginning you know and then later on it becomes more and more and more in concept to have this uh, strong narrations mm -hmm. when he's passing from the desert and he's uh, um, coming from this time tube, what is also a sculpture by, by me, built by me, introduced 2010 in New York, and um, then he moves towards to the, to the ranch, and he found all these tools, and it's about this creating his own language, how he can use these things, <coughs> what is also like children plays, you know, like a children play, and then he goes forward more and more, and, uh, and it uh, goes to the to the to the to the uh, to the urban space and uh, mm -hmm. and discover it's just a discovering like uh, like a, an, an urban area like uh, Los Angeles. But it's also discovering of the society and also it's there are a lot. They of have these encounters with with people, people. The strange encounters with people, and uh, he's passing by different stations. From from uh, also this uh, is one p one uh, uh, situation for example when he walks down the Wilshire Boulevard with somebody and he his um, and the, 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 his friends saying to him we are putting one foot in front of the other and this and he's uh, repeating this we are putting one foot in front of the other and I would say this is. Ma mainly the, the 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 thing what uh, what the whole installation says, you know, is that we cannot see any more or cannot net make predictions about the future, or if we cannot go towards f what is beyond the screen, what is beyond the horizon, you know. So I switch the horizon in the, uh, from the horizontal to the vertical, and open the door to see what can happen, you know? And I think one of the main, main statements is we can just put one foot in front of the other. And I really liked it because this, this, this sentence is originally uh, borrowed from a short novel by uh, Ray Bradbury from a, a sci-fi story uh, from the 50s. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, far distant society on Mars has these law, hardcore laws that nobody can uh, walk around after 10 o'clock. So, and it's really strange because it's, uh, when they pa the police pass by and he has this, uh, he has his own experience in Los Angeles, 1953 he, he, wrote, he wrote, that uh, he is walking down the Wilshire Boulevard with a friend, and the police pa passed by, and they asked him, "Why are you walking there? It's, it's strange, you know." So, and just he said in a spontaneous answer, "We just putting one foot in front of the other, and they keep them in jail, you know, overnight because this." And I think it's all, it's also a very actual, um, actual. Thing uh, phenomena today because black people faces this problem at the moment in LA. Right, like yeah. when they walk around, they suspect Absolutely. to do something. You know what I mean? Because in LA to walk, it's just like a strange thing. Everybody's in the car. driving a car. <laughs> yeah, it's on a car. So you know, 
So a simple experience. Or surfing. <laughs> <laughs> so Ray Bradbury is transform or translate this idea of, uh, of his experience to a sci-fi story and I appropriate this idea to my character to can just get and the main, the main energy, I think, or the, 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 the thing is just to, to move, to walk. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, I don't know the direction, I have no uh, answer to what I can follow, but he discover and encounters his, the space and the, the people and all the things, you know. Are there any questions? Anybody wants to? Add something? <laughs> Not for the moment. <laughs> it was just one. No. It was no, just there one. There is also a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of references in the video. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of references to uh, architecture in LA. Right. There are a lot of references also to Hollywood movies, right. uh, and especially movies that are sort of uh, a bit science fiction or uh, etc. One of the uh, the curious thing is, is that two locations, the, the Bradbury building and the Ennis house are both uh, references to two locations where Blade Runner was, right. uh, was set. Yeah. Uh, and Blade Runner was also a movie about what is going to happen in, uh, uh, what is happening in 2019, which is basically the year we're living, right. nearly the year we're living. Right. So it's a back and forth, uh, sort of uh, going back and forth uh, yeah, it's through it's time. It suggests uh, also this, this idea to future is connected so to the past and past is in a dynamic relation connected to the future yeah. and between is the presence and we just move but I think we are constantly remodel, uh, we have a, a process of remodulation of future into present, and we can feel, and that makes a lot of people uncomfortable because they feel the space becomes smaller around them and uh, the, the tide of the energy or of the space itself mm -hmm. becomes more and more closer to the uh, physical, yeah. uh, what I can say, it's like what Berardi wrote about uh, the neuro, neuro trauma of persona because there's global mind, you know. So it becomes more and more tight and traumatized uh, the people, yeah. yeah. Could you please just use the microphone? It's going to flash. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So, okay, it's a big, big fortune to be here and uh, talk to to the artists. Uh, just uh, something that pops out in my mind because you were talking about the relationship between future and uh, present. It's it's one of the focuses uh, we have usually in our school. You know the relationship. I teach history, so it's. Uh, uh, you said something about uh, uh, the uh, human being is afraid of um, remodeling uh, the future in the present and vice versa. Mm, I didn't. A, remod a remodulation of the future into present. I said. Okay. Uh, it's like mm -hmm. you cannot really have the future in front of you. It's in that moment you are try to get something in the future, it's already present. It's already, it's already an effect on yourself. So I would say the next time window is not 2046. So it's the, n the next Blade Runner. Uh, now I saw it just a few days. It's, I think it's, a, gr it's, I think it's a, great, a, great, a great one. It's really good. I really liked it. And I was surprised how, how good it was because I, I was the opinion that nobody can this movie do a second time. No, this is not a prequel. It's not a, it's, I think it's just like something between and I really say, I really think it's really cool, the movie. I liked it. Why Blade Runner? I mean, you could have chosen other movies. There might, there must, I is mean, there a reason? I uh, mean, I like so many ideas. I mean, I, it's so complex, the whole thing, you know what I mean? It's like 
also a character, I have a lot of references to this character, FM2030. Okay. It's a, uh, a utopian or a futurist, also a transhumanist, but it's a problem at the moment because the alt-right also uses terms like transhumanism and mm -hmm. uh, it's also, it's a pro it becomes problematic because I ha also have a problem to optimize everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why not s uh, people they are, s some people that have uh, handicapped, why that should not care, uh, has his right to, to be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like it, or everything is so functional mm -hmm. and I, t I don't like this idea, but I like the idea to say um, evolution the natural evolution comes to an end and uh, the next step is the, the engineering by human itself, you know. The, the, yeah, connecting to machines and, and something this way. Are there any questions? I mean, for example, the replicants, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's an incredible idea of Philip K. Dick to to have this, I this idea of the replicants, because can you imagine that you are, your memories are not based on experience by your own? Yeah. Like it's just borrowed from some some others, you know. It's it's a weird idea, but I really like this this opens a field of many pictures and many we have a, a much more bigger imagination about. What is possible? What can what can happen? You know, with this. Yeah. Any question? No. <laughs> oh. oh no! <laughs> no, but this does not want to be a conversation between me and then the exclusive. <laughs> uh. So, um, of course, the video is not the only part of the installation. Uh, tell us something about the whole set, because it is yeah. a sort of set. Uh, yeah. It's uh, you walk through it in a sort of circular, right. also way, even though the room is not very mm. big. I was I was surprised when I saw the room done in real. I thought it's a bit bigger. I imagined that it's bigger, but it was really like it's a tight thing. Mm -hmm. But then I thought it's a, this is a challenge. And in the end, I liked it that it's so. There happened so many things on uh, such a small space. And I liked um, to find the right constellation in the space. So I start, um, I will start with the plinth. Mm -hmm. This is a exhibition display um, inspired by uh, Salon de Sartre uh, Francais, uh, 1914. And um, they used this, uh, this display for the jury. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, it uh, works really good, like, to can my work in a way, not have this um, rigid mm -hmm. presentation on the wall, what is like a climb, a real, like, mm -hmm makes them more, much more weight. So I would say it's much more destabilized the, the work in a way. Mm -hmm. Also, it comes up the idea of a bookstore or from the takeaway or, yeah, so from the market. It's so you can use it very in a practical way to, for, for the market. And also I could work in a quite diverse way. So I have, I remember I started out with a, a painting showing a spaceman, like comes from a, from a, from a sci-fi novel from the 70s, from a picture or something mm -hmm. inspired. Then also um, a fragment of a surreal landscape by uh, Richard Powers. Um, then some CDO and obligation paintings, what uh, are using um, graffiti, graphical um, forms and shapes from um, thank you, 
from um, financial, um, what is it? Um, um, tabellen, tabellen, what's in tabellen? Uh, graphics. Uh, graphics, uh, graphic forms, what shows you like how f financing grows and mm -hmm. falls, like, like the stock exchange and stuff, you know. And I use that for abstract paintings because it's also on the art market you see that abstract painting always works very on the on the on the commercial side on the commercial side works very well because you have only this I would say only this um, aesthetic surface in the first move. I wouldn't say that. Uh, abstract paintings are always empty or just, I wouldn't say this, <laughs> absolutely not. F for example, I'm, uh, I really like Ed Reinhardt, for example, uh, yeah. or an artist like Stephen Perino. Mm -hmm. I really like, like there's something, you mm -hmm. see there's uh, something also behind, it's not about the surface, so it's not about the um, uh, primary, the aesthetic category, categories, mm -hmm. you know. So. Um, so it's a walkthrough between different aspects yeah. of painting. Also, I showed a, 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 a rabbit as yes. a CEO. <laughs> oh, yeah. So a portrait of a CEO of today. Okay. So um, also uh, Isaac the Utopian, what came from a punk punk. Uh, um, newsletter from New York from the 80s, mm -hmm. but the, mo the, the shape is from a space helmet by um, Henry Moore okay. from the late work. So all these uh, futuri futuristic references mm -hmm. and in the same way this um, neoliberal f references on financial markets and, and uh, uh, how also, gravitation is is, is important. Mm -hmm. So it is this uh, this uh, works has by accident also a, 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 a real close yeah. connection to the time tubes, what else guys uh, that are like time doors through mm -hmm. different dimensions and stuff. You know, so I like the idea to connect what has to do gravitation with uh, the financial market, for example. Mm -hmm. What has this yeah. Is there any connection sure. between s this? Yeah, uh, and I like to hybridizing uh, uh, to make a hybrid between something what you cannot really sing together. You know, that's yeah. what it also like these two bigger works. The title is "Myth of the Near Future." Mm -hmm. uh, on the wall, with the frames yes, as right. a shape. Uh, it's uh, also like a, a borrowed by or a, re a recreation of a stage sta stage setting from a TV series like Star Trek from mm -hmm. the 70s, and I liked to sh to see how I, when I recreate with modern materi material how that work to get today. You know, it's just like a suggestion. It's not yeah. like an answer or something. It's not like mm -hmm. to say this is the futurist painting, but I think. When you see, when I saw them the first time right. because uh, somebody built it for me, and I was just surprised how weird they looked them. You know? They really, they are really cool. You know, I, I really like them, and I say just, wow, this idea is 50 years old, yeah. and it looks really fresh. It looks really like, yeah. wow, it's different to use a frame as the shape itself, not to frame a work. You know? so it's, it's uh, yeah, and I like this to change stuff and so. Mm -hmm. Also, the, uh, the wallpaper, it's called Transporter. Also reference to Star Trek, mm. like this transporter space. And, the l and I um, had these three different life forms in front of it. Three su also three suggestions of life forms. One is a pop culture reference from uh, Japanese, also in the 70s. Like, has this loose reference to uh, poisons uh, environment mm -hmm. and something like in this context of Godzilla or so it comes mm -hmm. up, you know, 
Then the other one is like a, a creature designer. Uh, this was yeah. a physicist, and, and he creates life forms what really can exist in in a way of certain conditions on a on a, on a, on, a, on a planet. And the third one is uh, kind of probably the mo the, the, the most um, um, imaginable for the future is. Mm -hmm how we can get together with machines and can optimize ourselves with machines, you know, and this is this kind of small robot, what I also has, but this is a life form, what I also um, um, saw in a, in, a, in a presence. Did you want to ask something? Everybody's feeling shy. <laughs> I would like to go back to the basic. Uh, I would like to speak about art, generally speaking, uh, since uh, uh, we study art in school. One of the questions we usually wonder is, uh, is that an important uh, to focus on the name of the artist. Since uh, you spoke a lot about the name you gave to your, uh, to your pieces, uh, is that important uh, for uh, the person who watches art, especially in a Biennale and in an art scenario where pieces and pieces go one after the other, and uh, what you appreciate is more the environment, more than singular piece, you know. Okay. Uh, you think is important, the name on uh, of the, the, name the, the, art, the artist, I mean, uh, yeah, the it's name. It's always important, the name of the artist. It's always important. You know, I mean, it changes the, the when you are see a work, you know, and you're not, you see the name, it changes your, uh, changes your perception how you look at it you know, of course the reception yeah of course I mean uh, yeah when you know the name but I mean when you're lucky you don't know the name and you have you can feel free how you how you work with this you know but I think it's I was sometimes surprised I saw artwork by Marcel Duchamp but when I see then the name of Marcel Duchamp and I see Okay, I can work with this because I can. I know his body of work, and I can you put can it. I have, it a, yeah. I have a, I have a narration. I have a, a history. I have a background idea about about the concept, how 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 he did work, you know. And yeah, I think it's important when you see um, a, 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 a painting with a nude by Picabia and by somebody he just do a painting by, uh, with him because it's, it was a meaning, you know, it has a certain kind of meaning, but the meaning comes also from the concept of the artist, of the whole idea, you know. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> say this, but I'm, you know what I mean, you can also um, buy a, a ready-made painting by somebody, and that could be stronger than a good painting, you know what I mean, by idea when it works really strong into context, you know? Yeah, we'll, we were also slightly speaking about something similar when you asked me uh, which of the painting, of your paintings I liked, and uh, because they are different, uh, also not only those in the show, I also saw uh, some of your previous work. Uh, right. Uh, there are some that are much more uh, abstract in a certain sense, and some that are, have a lot of uh, uh, pop culture and uh, look at comics and uh, superheroes. Right. Uh, and of course, if you put them into separate rooms and you take away the name label, right. uh, the name of the artist, they might even look uh, as if they I were mean, done by s two different artists. But when you put them together, they make yeah. completely sense together and you understand both of them better Right. Uh, I do. I do. I make two examples. For example, Ed Reinhardt, mm -hmm. he's doing this comics or this 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 uh, kite, uh, cartoon style 
commentary on uh, newspapers. Mm -hmm. And on the, other, on the other hand, you have this other, the other body of work of mm -hmm. this hardcore, mm -hmm. rigid concept of work yeah. in a process like a black m monk or something, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this idea. Or, for example, Stephen Perino, he also sh um, switched this in two parts of work, these yeah. drawings come this comic style, think uh, black um, um, punk attitude mm -hmm. drawings, and then the, si and the other side is very hardcore monochrome and uh, uh, shape paint paintings, you know? So I try to get both together in a way and mm -hmm. do it in a, in a um, in once, in, 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 the, in, in, in the together, you know. Yes. Anybody else? But I have a very strong opinion about economy in arts, for example. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not li I don't like to, I really f feel like my work is very based in an eclectic way, mm -hmm. that everything, not everything, but the, ma the main part in my work is very like based on concepts. It's mm -hmm. very, even my early work is, was always in appropriation of something, you know what yeah. I mean? It's never been like, I do express, expressive paintings. You know? Often people think this, that I, I did expressive yeah. paintings, but it was always ap ap appropriating something, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I think this uh, I, from uh, your words, I have understand that uh, um, a painting or a video or um, an installation is more important uh, the message uh, that the artist uh, uh, than the emotion uh, that uh, the um, painting creates uh, on uh, the person. I understand uh, the truth. I mean, you would say that my works have not em the emotional aspect of the work is. Um, uh, from your words, I have understand that uh, for you mm -hmm. is more important the message of um, an installation that uh, the emotion that create. Uh, uh I think this you cannot you cannot uh, divide this because emotion is also a message, is also information, and I think my work has very strong emotional uh, parts and. That would be quite elimina elimina elimination or a, a determination of what is emotional. Uh, this is a wide field what could be emotional, you know what I mean? I mean, for example, uh, 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 Bresson, the filmmaker Bresson, he did very hardcore conceptual movies mm -hmm. like Money or something, you know, but they are have very strong emotional uh, feelings about when I see this movie, for example. Really, I would, you know what I mean? It's like what you mean, maybe it's um, what I try to say with econ economy. You can see immediately when an artist creates a kind of lie in a painting in a form of um, he wants to show us his skills in a way like uh, there is something what I can. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Can give you is not too explainable. Mm -hmm. And a good work has always this aspect is not restless explainable. So, but I think the parts of a paintings are clear and most of the things what you see today is just variations of postmodern mm -hmm. theories. And that's why I think it's was for me important to get back to 1930 as a time, but more as a picture of this time to have a strong uh, origin like the suprematists, what they did, you, see, you know what I mean? It's like when you see many monochrome pa painters today, but they are not, can get any more behind these ideas of Malevich or, uh, or Rochenko or, but no. maybe some, some would say it doesn't matter, but for me it matters. And I don't want to uh, wasting time with ideas like this. Okay. 
Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. I also have a question uh, relating the point that you said before with the date 1930. I think you said that was the decline in Europe, and on the other hand, you had maybe the birth of the supermodel. Superheroes. Yeah, yeah, the super model in general, which yeah. is the hero as well. He is a yeah. super hero, which I mean, I said super model because it refers what Warhol later has done. Yeah? Right. But the, in, on the, in the comic, uh, the superhero was before Warhol. Yeah? Right. And I wonder if the superhero, in a way, had to do with the decline of Europe for one, and if the superhero, in general, is not just a slightly boring model of the future. If we look at um, science fiction novels, a lot of uh, creatures or new breeds or, 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 uh, yeah, are not heroes. Yeah? Right. The hero is a kind of uh, almost um, Pfadfinder. What is that in English? Um, Boy, Boy Scout motive yeah? mm -hmm. of, of educating young kids, uh, help the lady across the street kind of thing. You know. Mm -hmm. So I wonder um, how you see that. I mean, uh, you're, you're right. It has something to do with the decline in Europe, I think. And <coughs> but I think the, the superhero itself, when they uh, create uh, the superhero, it has something to do with a desire to get become more than a human, to become more more um, powerful, to become more, um, yeah, so the point is that it's an interesting uh, uh, subject because what can biology do in the future is something like, it's da very dangerous thing, you know, but you can create like what in Star Wars you al already see a clone, a clone army or something, you know what I mean, or uh, like, like um, some people have this kind of special Eigenschaften, uh, um, um, special qualities, yeah, to can, can do this or can do this, what you see for example by the X, X, X men or something something, you know, X-Men story, X-Men history. Yes. I, I, ca I cannot see that stays at the props in the uh, idea or so, you know. I think it's much more uh, technical development. It's, it's, I think it's a very, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a business in the end. It's a business for entertainment. And it's later, it's a it will be a business for bio biological and uh, technical uh, development. <coughs> yeah, but it appeals just to the sorry. No, it's okay. It just, <laughs> it just appeals to the singular individual, uh, individual, not not to a group. Today we talk about networks, about group intelligence, but the superhero is only always the one single person. It's not true. It's not only a single person. It's it's also can be a group. For, for example, the X-Men is a group, you know, they are in combination together and also they, uh, they created superheroes, uh, they can get only uh, get a superhero together because it, it's in, in, in when they divide it, they are, cannot um, um, transform the heroes, heroes superpowers. <coughs> yeah, for example. <laughs> okay. Uh, in your description of your work, you refer a lot to um, science fiction and pop uh, pop art. Do you, but you pop don't really, pop culture. yeah, pop culture, and you don't really refer to more modern science fiction. Do you also believe that in that way, um, science fiction is also no longer, that that's also been an exhausted topic, like you think in the monochrome paintings? I mean, it's, it's the, the whole show is about the questioning is, comes the future to an end, you know, there is, um, is there any concept for the future? And probably there is not, yeah, but I mm -hmm. th that's why I said to the beginning, the only thing what I can climb for me, it's like just putting one foot in front of the other, and we cannot look 
that's why the, t t the title Vertical Horizon, so I switched the, the horizon, what is a kind of a flat sc screen, into the vertical and have, can open a, the next door. So you believe that because the future is inexhaustible, therefore science fiction is also inexhaustible uh, because I mean it's always a future. I mean, science fiction is a tool. Yeah. It's a space for imagination. And I think it is a much more important tool today than it was, in a way. But at the same time, we don't have any more the ability to can create a wider space of imagination how the future will be. Mm -hmm. Because I think, for example, we, we, are, we will um, change also our real environment out of the cyberspace. We, would, we will create parts of the cyberspace and have real effects, real detailed material in our real environment. So uh, this is conflicting all these things and will be changed everything forever, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Here you go. Number three of 2016. <coughs> 2046. 2000, right, correct. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I, again, I want to go back to the basic of art. Mm, where our students belong to a Liceo Artistico, so the, the main subject is art. And we s sometimes we discuss the opportunity of the artist of speaking about his work. Since uh, uh, the piece of art is a message concluded into a specific language, why adding a verbal message on a piece of art was already completed? And besides, art is a very synthetic language. Verbal language is a very analytic language. So why putting this together? This matching sometimes does not create a confusion, a confusion into the person who can who, who enjoy your work. I mean, when I understand the question the right way, I mean, you're asking how text can exist in an artwork or something. Uh, maybe more why adding? Yeah, why, why adding? Adding, why adding like more? Why adding more since yeah, your I, I, piece? I yes, I, under, I understood this, but yeah, um, because, because we have to be here. Yeah. Because we are. Everything is already loaded with text. Everything is. Uh, is an information, also a brush stroke is an information, you know? It's like, of course, you always can be surprised by an artwork, and I hope this, this is, that will happen, but you have your tools for interpretations, and you have, maybe they are wrong, you know, your tools. You can be wrong, you can um, you have a misunderstanding with, with something that can happen, but I think, um, why I should uh, not say my references, for example, you know? I can't say without, it's also to what I, with the emotions, it's, it can be, somebody can think, it takes away the emotions, it can take away the, the silence, or that can take away the secret of, of a work, but it's clear I have this reference for something, the, the strongest example maybe in my show is the, the two myths of the new future, these two ready-made works, I could say, because we just let the specialists build the things, you know, it's a fabric and the frames on it, and it's always different, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like uh, when you see a ready-made, you know, first time. It's, a, it's also a text, the ready-made. It's, it's a text because it makes clear that how a work is changing from one thing to, an, to another thing, you know? It's transforming, you know? It's a, it's a concept, it's an idea. It's a philosophical idea. So I can use texts from sci-fi and can use uh, image, imaginary image, images from sci-fi. I can use this um, 
images or sculpturing from, sci uh, from superheroes, and I can also change this thing, you know? It's, it's, it's uh, something else, because it goes through my thinking process, and it goes through, through the material, and I use a different material, and I, there's always a difference between this, what you have as a, as a information and what is this in the material. In my very, very poor opinion, mm. you have a fortune. You have a fortune to pass a message with a language that we don't have. We are, unfortunately, to use the verbal language, unfortunately, which is the less, least clear uh, way to pass a message. So you have a fortune. Why you want to spoil your message with uh, our language, our language of poor people? Well, I don't know. I, I'm not an artist, so I cannot <laughs> answer that. Um, anyway, these open tables are also an occasion, uh, Christine wanted them uh, also an occasion to speak about the artist's practice, uh, uh, to talk to the artists about how they work, how they make their work, how their everyday life is. Uh, because there's this sort of, uh, I think there's uh, this image of the artist sometimes of being somebody crazy or uh, I don't know. Uh, every person has a different idea of what the artist is as a figure. So uh, tell us something about your practice, your everyday life. How do you work? Where do you work? Do you have a big studio, a uh, small studio? Do you work with a lot of people? Uh, do you do collaborations? Do you do everything by yourself? Uh, do you travel a lot? Uh, I travel a lot. Okay. I have a middle-sized studio. I have uh, my <laughs> studios in my, my flat. I have a, a big flat yeah, and I have my exactly. studio in, in How do, you s do you separate in a certain sense your private life? It's from not your separated. Uh, what separate. makes sometimes really hard to, to have So your studio impression. is your living room, basically. In a way, <laughs> everything is my studio. And I live in, as a, in, this, in this kind of world, you know, have some people to discuss ideas. Mm -hmm. um, also, what was the question? Do you work it? alone? Do you work with other people? How many, like, uh, do you I, I do work, everything work, by yourself? Mainly, I, you work, I, mainly I work alone, okay. but I have uh, two, three people to help me. And when I do sculptures, I have a complete group yeah. to have this. And, uh, and do you do them always in your studio or are they produced somewhere else? Somewhere else. So I, I mean, I can say in the main thing, I, I get exactly that what I need. Okay. When I do big paintings, I, I, I rent a, a big studio, contemporary outside. And when I do sculptures, I have a team with four or five people mm -hmm. to produce this, to discuss this. On and on, like this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to tell you too much about <laughs> my uh, how. Uh, it has to be a mystery. How it, how it works. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, because him, you yeah. know. <laughs> because him, you know. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. I think it's really astounding that a German has this sort of counter coolness factor that I've just never seen anywhere in German artwork. Do you have any other inspirations or artists that have inspired you? Or did that come from your parents shoving comic books down your throat? Where did that come from? I mean, ex I mean, the comic has an aspect on me, has an impact on me when I was a child. Um, Artists who inspired me it's a lot. I really like a lot of artists. Cannot really s uh, can eat a specific answer for this. Can I really I, like. For me personally, I, I look for art that makes me happy. That makes me like think like life can be fun. You know, that's why I, I do love Jeff Koons, and I think that there's something in your work that makes me happy, and that's uh -huh. really wonderful to see because most art right now I think is a trend to um, social pedagogic. Uh, uh -huh. a commentary about worldness, globalization, and it's just wonderful to have uh, uh, 
vision and dreams and inspirations. I Thank mean, you. I, I mean, I, th I think you mean maybe this playful idea in my work. Right. It's very yeah. like uh, experiment, open, open thing. But I think I have also this kind of um, pedagogic moments also in my work, uh, psychological uh, moments. Um, when Fran walks through this urban landscape and encounters uh, this different people and, for example, f in front of the bus or with a, with a lady, has this encounter with this, with this lady and, uh, and um, who speaks on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, um, uh, this um, business, business area. And, and have this poem um, from mar to market to market. So um, I think in the main thing it's this playful, playful idea to can handle that on a, on a very light. And but this also produces misunderstandings. You know, a lot of people, for this case, a lot of people don't take my work very serious. Or so you know, it's also like it's too funny or it's not serious enough or so it's like this always you know it's ma it happens many times <laughs> yeah please you want to ask a question down there? Okay. how important is the process for your work so you have the ID how do you start by working Sorry, no, sorry. how important is the process in your work the you have process. an ID a process of okay, yeah. process in my work. Uh, the process is always the difference between what you uh, have your starting point and the uh, end result. The, 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 the process is between, yeah, and I can say to you that I, I'm working really l with ideas in a way, mm -hmm. you know, because I, even when I have a text, you know, I cut, off, cut out a, t a text and put this together with this text and find out there is some uh, connection or this interesting overlayering, but in the way of the process, I think this is very um, um, useful to have this process because the idea is sometimes when you have the um, it's sometimes very boring, you know. So it needs the process between to develop an idea on in the practice, in your practice, with the material, with the, the things, what problems you have to can realize in the right way this idea, you know, to can, to can, yeah, to can show up this, yeah. 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 When you were shooting the, the video and you were walking, because you're the one, uh, uh, your friend, right? You're walking in the video. Right. Right. How was the reaction of the people you yeah, you, you yeah. encountered? Uh, I mean, because I suppose you weren't a, a huge troop. Yeah, sometimes, so not always, but sometimes. Yeah. For example, the, the desert, we, we we went to the desert with 15 people. Yeah, uh, but when w you were walking, shooting this on the streets of LA and in the village, how did the people react? It was. Was there any reaction? It was sometimes dangerous. For, exa for example, the election, uh, the, the polling station mm -hmm. during the election, you know, yeah. was uh, on the 8th of November. Okay. And uh, th this was uh, dangerous because you can get in jail when you're filmed uh, in, inside of a polling station, you know. So okay. it was some risk. Also, you have always problems with the security guards. Mm -hmm. Get in front of a building, you cannot film there, you know, because it's, uh, there is this copyright thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so we tried go and stop like this, you know. So, mm -hmm. we so it was sometimes we has to disappear, <laughs> have to broke down or everything. Some some day, if uh, another day, try another day, different location. But of course, we had uh, two very good uh, location uh, scouts, mm -hmm. and I was with them, and I. Road scenes, and I uh, 
I worked on storyboards, and I, a lot of a lot of scenes I developed during the when I when I drove with the with the location scout through LA or uh, during the the, sh the, the shoots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I asked the super uh, hero question, I remember now what was behind that also because the figure that you represent in the film is the opposite of that somehow. It's this guy who has fallen down to earth and is in a way indeed super alienated. Right. You know, his, yeah. his whole uh, physical appearance is uh, very clumsy in a way right. and his face is emotionless. You have these gloves. I wouldn't. Like I wouldn't say this. That it's not yes, emotionless. Okay, but, but it's uh, you know, <laughs> with a big head and yeah. Some, something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Even if you shake the head, you don't have even hair that would wave, yeah. for example, yeah. or things like that. Yeah. It's 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 a very <laughs> it's a very alienated figure. Let's say yeah. it like this. And and th I think that's the opposite of this kind of superhero who wants to change the world, help here and help there, and has these extra qualities. You miss qualities uh, in the f in the film. Exactly. I mean, this uh, this character. I mean, it's a mixed up. I would say between an ape and an amphibious uh, mm -hmm. being, and also with this kind of strange dreadlocks hair hair um, style. I would mm -hmm. say it's really really alien alienated. Yeah, and he is wearing this business suit. You know. Mm -hmm. It's also uh, which is very strange in uh, really <laughs> strange to, to get uh, in a way in this business world you can you know and find his own language but uh, I think the, for example I think the face is very um, the quality of the face and uh, you can s uh, see it it's very uh, have a very lot of emotions I think it's not lifeless because in a strange way, I cannot really explain, it's the angle of the camera, it's the lightning, shadows, it has so, it can express so many emotions. It could be sad, could look sad, it could be like, uh, have a strong idea about something when he f is on the ranch, for example, and is finding all this thing, has this kind of uh, wondering about, like a little child and stuff, you know. And also, like, he has this melancholic thing because um, he cannot really, he's in a way isolated. Mm -hmm. He tries to get in, he has these encounters, but he's just isolated. But he tries also to resist what can be, on what is the, there is no, there is no, I, there is no, not really an idea about how y you can produce a real sci-fi movie today. Mm. And he, he will resist this idea. He, he wanted to, uh, he yeah. wants to have a, the big sci-fi narration, mm. but he can't. He, he felt, you know, he's, he's failing, you know, he's failing, you know. But I say he's, it, it's, it's a being, you know, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not that uh, has not has no gender, you know. So it's it's we cannot yeah. say it. Yeah, it's it's failed the, yeah. this this character on his environment. Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that um, this is a the mask has no emotions. I, I, I think this is one of the qualities. Yeah. What I've very uh, I've been su very surprised that I realized that the mask is really alive. It's like when you see this yeah. from this thing, it looks complete different. And then on on this on uh, on 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 this shoot, you yeah. know, it's a complete different. Setting, and you notice you, know? you notice it if you watch the whole video. Uh, the well, longer you watch it, the more you notice that actually. Yes, it's, uh, and also he's ch uh, changing the suit. He's starting out with yeah. this uh, uh, space suit, what is actu actually uh, a night suit from a from a night. It's, yeah. a, it's a B from a B movie or <laughs> from a B movie, and uh, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's. Um, also, the scene in the hotel when he has these encounters in on the TV with himself, it's just like really strange. It's just like he's not, one, not aware how it looks. Like yeah. when Frankenstein in this movie, it's a famous scene, sees his um, uh, face in the, in, the, in the water and he, he is doing this, you know, and it's just like... Mm -hmm. uh, 
But there's also a perception uh, when you watch the whole movie. At the beginning, the character, he seems alienated. Uh, but at the end, it's the humans who seem... He has many, he has many uh, human features, yeah. too, you know, I would say, you know. He's not only alienated, uh, it's not only an alien, alien. He has many, he has yeah. many human features. But at the end, you have a sort of perception that he's sort of normal and everybody else is not normal mm. <laughs> or sort of not belonging. Yeah, and, and he just walks through the whole movie. Yeah. He's just in this movement. And also the end is like on the beach, you know, yeah. and this is passing by this, uh, this uh, um, final scene of uh, Planet of the Apes and it's passing by the camera and you see just him behind the light, you know. It's, yeah. you know? It's, so it's an open yeah. idea, you know, it's an open idea. There's no answer for this, but I say just putting one foot in front of the other. Something we yeah. have some we have something to do, you know. So, are there any other questions? Because if not, uh, it's already two mm. past two o'clock. So uh, I would like to thank you for being here with us today and for sharing so many things about your work. And also thank all uh, the people who came here and participated to this Tavola Aperta. And I hope you enjoy the rest uh, of the day and the exhibition. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.